Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you are new. My name is Antonisha Lachey and this is Deep Rooted Disciples. On this channel, we focus on helping you learn and study God's word in order to draw near to him. If that is something that you are interested in, then be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already and make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you are interested in doing a deep dive into Genesis chapter one. Again, if you are not new, welcome back. Welcome back to the Genesis Deep Dive. I'm so excited to kick off this study. We kind of kicked it off when we did the intro to Genesis, but we are officially in scripture. We are in Genesis chapter one. Um, I am, as usual, filming this intro video after I've already done everything else. So I'm not gonna make this intro very long because the video itself is already about 45 minutes or so. Um, I do anticipate that these videos are gonna be a little bit long um, because I am, filming myself studying and I try to speed it up as much as possible but still allow you to see what I'm writing and then I come back and go over my notes and again that'll be the format for a while until I find a different format that works a little bit better. I've tried to do a voiceover as I'm watching the recording of me studying and that's not quite working out the way I want it to and then I know for a fact that I can't focus because I, I am actually doing this study myself for the first time as I'm recording myself so I know that I can't focus studying myself and trying to talk to you guys at the same time so with that being said these videos are probably going to probably going to be somewhere in the 45 minute to an hour range um but take your time um watching them they will always be here they will always be in the playlist um that I have on my channel so there is that so I do have um uh, notes. I'm not going to call it a study guide, but um, I do have notes from Genesis 1. This will be linked below. Again, it will take you to my Ko-fi page um, and you can get this. This is a completely free resource. Um, it just has some of my notes that I put in my Bible. I cannot fit all of my notes from my Bible on this. Um, I couldn't even talk about all of the different little things and notes in the video that I had. Um, it's Halloween. My kids are watching a scary movie with my husband, so I apologize. But um, I wanted to go ahead and get this finished for you guys. So um, definitely check that out. Again, this is a free resource. If you have not watched my video about my Kofi page, um, if you are able to and if you feel led to, you can leave a tip or a donation for the resource. Um, there are instructions on the page where you go to download it. Do not feel obligated to do that in any way. I create these as free resources for you guys so that you can have them for free. Um, if you just want to get it for free, Free, just put a zero in the box and go ahead and get it and you can download it free of charge um if you have not checked out the video about my Kofi page that will be linked below um, i'll link the video below explaining the Kofi page but the Kofi page itself will always be linked below that is a way for you guys to support this ministry if you feel led to do so again do not feel obligated to do so i will continue making these videos free of charge but those of you who are able to and who feel led to you can definitely stand in the gap for those who are not able to but definitely uh, check this out. Um, like I said, we are going to go ahead and kind of jump into the video. Again, I don't want to hold you guys up too much. I don't have very much to say except for, and I talked about it when I did my study notes after the fact, um, there is so much <laughs> that you can dig into with Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is one of, if not the most, besides probably Revelation, I don't know, between Genesis 1 and the book of Revelation, I don't know which is more heavily debated and talks about and discussed, but there is just so much just packed in this one chapter that there's no way in the world I could deep dive into it. But this is what I love about taking my notes directly in my Bible. So the next time I come back to Genesis 1, I can see the notes that I already took and I can build on top of that and just add more notes from a different commentary from different resources. So um, I'm really excited about that. What I did focus on is the repetition. Um, every single word, every single punctuation mark, every single space, every single thing in the Bible is there intentionally. It all has importance. It all has meaning. But when you see something repeated in the Bible, please pay attention. It is repeated for a reason. And there's a lot of repetition in Genesis 1. And that's what I focus on is some of just the bigger themes of um, the repetition of the creation. Because again, um, we talked about it in the background to Genesis. Uh, Genesis shows you who God is um, by showing you what God did. It shows you who God is. And in Genesis 1, we can see him as our creator. And so I kind of focus on that big theme of God being our creator. And then again, a lot of that repetition and specifically us being created in God's image and what that means for us. So those are the things I kind of focus my notes on. So again, I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I will go ahead and say a quick prayer as we dive into scripture. And then I will actually read all of Genesis 1 for you guys. And then we will jump into me taking my notes. 
Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, just for who you are. Thank you for creating us and creating this universe for us to live in. Thank you for having so much love for us and wanting to love on us and show your love to us. I know that you did not need to create us. You chose to, and you chose to because you are love and you wanted to show that love to us. Lord, as we dig into your word, as we dive into your word, Lord, we ask that you open our eyes and our ears so that we can see and that we can hear your word. Lord, we ask that you open our minds so that we are able to receive your word. We ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to give us a spirit of understanding, a spirit of wisdom, and a spirit of discernment so that we are able to understand your words so that we are able to know what is false and what is not of you and we are able to just dive into your word in order to draw near to you lord lord as i lead this study as i teach your word to others i ask that you allow the holy spirit to allow me a spirit of humbleness and so that i can make sure that i am pointing everyone back to you lord i do not want them to see me i do not want them to see anything that i have done because i am doing nothing without you lord i want to lead them to you and have them draw near to you so as as we dive into your word, Lord, just please um, just bless us with, again, your wisdom and your discernment and allow us to see and hear what you would have us to see and hear in this moment as we dive into your word. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. 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 So um, we are going to go ahead. I am going to go ahead and just read Genesis 1 to you. Um, I am reading from the English Standard Version. I did put a notation um, on the top of the notes that this is an English Standard Version translation because I do write out some scripture um, and reference the verse numbers and everything. So I just wanted to make you guys aware if you didn't already know that I am using the ESV translation. So I will go ahead and read uh, Genesis 1. And again, the heading that is in my Bible is the creation of the world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its own kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged birds according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. 
and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and jump in. So again, you will see a quick time lapse of me studying. I believe it's maybe about 10 minutes or so. So if you wanna take that time to either read over again, if there's just gonna be music playing, I won't be talking. So if you wanna use that time to study yourself or if you wanna use that time to reread um, that first chapter or whatever you want to do, um, there's always timestamps linked below. And then you can go on and you will see all of my study notes and my discussion with you guys. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next clip.
Hey friends, so time to go over the notes that I took. Um, I have a lot of different notes here about a lot of different things um, and I did not even dig as deep as I could have. There were a lot of things that the commentary was bringing up. Um, Genesis 1 is one of the most highly debated chapters in the Bible um, and there's just so much that can be unpacked in this one chapter um, that I just didn't have the time or the space to dig into, nor did I really want to focus on that at this point in time. And that is one of the beauties of me taking my notes directly in my Bible, because the next time I come through and I read or I study Genesis, I can just add notes onto what I already have. So I just want to go over this with you guys. Um, and you will see like everything, even everything that I'm going over with you um, could not be fit. Uh, I could not fit it on the, um, the study guide. And again, these study guides in these printables are meant to be just a jumping off point for you guys to dig a little bit deeper and just kind of help you get started. <clears throat> so the first thing, so um, the first thing that I pointed out and because it's very obvious, you guys know I use my color coding system. I apologize. There's a lot of activity going on around my house and so my alarms are going off. Um, I did use my color coding system and I pointed out this entire thing, this is just all God. This is all God. There is that um, portion in um, Genesis 1. This is chapter, excuse me, not chapter, verse uh, 26, when it says, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Um, and so I did highlight that orange just to notate the presence of the Trinity. Um, but other than that, I apologize. I'm trying to silence my phone. Um, other than that, everything is highlighted in blue because this is all God. This is all the Trinity. Um, so that was kind of an easy one to just do the highlighting. I actually went back and forth for a good minute about whether or not I would even highlight it because I've been going back and forth. Do I want to use my color coding system? And because I've already started using it, I think I do want to. It would be really cool to see this entire Bible highlighted in this color coding system. Um, but there are going to be some times where it is just one color. Like I showed you guys in Psalms where there's one Psalm where the entire Psalm is just praise. It's just praising God. And so the whole thing is purple, but that's fine. So I just highlighted the whole thing first. Um, and I did that before I even started recording because I wanted to make sure that I gave the highlighter time to um, dry because I knew that I would be um, circling. So the main thing that I focus on in Genesis 1 is the repetition. And um, I don't know if you've ever heard um, or if I'm the first one to let you know, every single word, every single placement of every word, every single punctuation mark in the Bible is very, very intentional. Um, and so when you see something that is repeated in the Bible, um, it is something for you to pay attention to, especially if there is a lot of repetition in the one chapter, in the one passage. Um, it is very important. And there's a lot of that in Genesis 1. And so that's kind of what I focused on. And I focused on the big um, picture things. So I did already have this note here. Um, and I talked about this when I did the um, background info for Genesis, but basically Moses is writing Genesis during the 40 years in the wilderness to remind them of all that God had already done. They, the Israelites, they either had firsthand experiences with God at Mount Sinai when um, he gave Moses the Ten Commandments and all the laws and everything. Um, but this is kind of towards the end of that 40 years um, in the wilderness when Moses was writing this as far as most scholars believe. And so at that point, a lot of the first generation that had that firsthand experience with God, a lot of them had already passed away. So a lot of these were um, the children of those people who had secondhand accounts from their family members. So their parents were the ones who had that direct um, experience with God at Mount Sinai. But either way, um, they knew who God was. Um, and so there was no need for Moses to introduce him. Moses could just call him by name and tell of his greatness and everyone knew exactly who he is. Um, so that's where it starts in the beginning God. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of debate and discussion around everything in Genesis one, but that just that one beginning, um, <laughs> no pun intended, has a lot going on with it. So when it, it said in the beginning, God, which lets us know that God was already there. It didn't say in the beginning, God was created or there was some other creator that created God. God was already there. Um, and then I also put a note here that was already here. Um, 
I said in Genesis 1 1, we get in the beginning God. And then in Revelation 22 21, we get the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. So you have God in the very first line of the Bible, God in the very last line of the Bible, because he is the beginning and he is the ending. He is the Alpha and he is the Omega. Um, and it's just something that I just kind of made note of there. But, um, like I said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So Mo it's like Moses just begins and he starts telling this tale of what God did. Um, and by seeing what God did, we also get to see who God is. And we talked about that again in the intro to Genesis. But again, there was no explanation of this is who God was and this is where he came from and all of this stuff because he, he was already there. Um, and so again, like I said, I focus on the repetition um, and it, some things, I have a couple little side notes over here too. So the first one is said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Um, and in the commentary, so just to, I think I talked about it in the intro, but in the, the commentaries that I use, I use my life application study Bible, and then I use the enduring word commentary. Um, I will have both of those linked below the enduring word commentary. It is a website, um, but it is also an app. Um, so I have the app on my tablet and that's what I was using to pull all of my notes and everything. So um, in the Enduring Word commentary, one of the things um, that really stood out to me, it was talking about our big God. So it says, if you believe Genesis 1-1, which is in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, um, you really have no problem believing the rest of the Bible. Um, and the reason why that is put there, because there are a lot of people out there who want to believe bits and pieces of the Bible, but not believe all of the Bible. Um, and in my opinion, just my personal opinion, you can't have it that way. It's either you believe all of it or you believe none of it. Um, but this specifically says that if you believe that God created the heavens and the earth, you should have no problems believing the rest of the Bible because the God that is big enough to create all the heavens and the earth is definitely big enough to do all the rest of the things that the Bible says that he did and that he does. So that was something that really stood out to me and that I made sure to make note of um, because again, I know that there is a lot of different debates and things. And I know that there are people who do not believe all of the Bible. And so they pick and choose which pieces they want to believe and which pieces they want to accept. And that's just not the way that it should be. Um, and then the other note that I put here is that creation didn't happen by chance. Um, a lot of people who do not believe in God, the creator believes that, um, we are all here in creation and all of the universe everything is just here by some random stroke of luck some by chance um and i like the fact that it specifically pointed out that chance merely describes the statistical probability of something happening chance itself can neither do or perform anything and that's something that i knew and that's something i feel like we all know but we don't really think about it we don't um there's someone who I follow on YouTube and I can't remember who it is right now, but they're constantly talking about looking up the words, um, using a Bible dictionary or using a dictionary and looking up words that you come across in the Bible, because there are words that you think that you know the definition to, and you hear it all the time and you use it all the time. But when you really look up the definition and you see all the different meanings, it really blows your mind. Um, when you realize what the actual definition is in the context of what you're reading, and so that was one of those that chance and you hear people say it all the time. Oh, this thing happened by chance or this person just this thing happened because they were just lucky. It just happened by chance. But um, this right here that it just really struck home that um, chance really is just a description of the, the probability of something happening. But chance itself cannot make that thing happen. It can't do anything. It can't perform anything. So that was something that stood out to me. And so um, the notes that I had here, um, I again, I love these sidebar articles in Genesis in a lot of in a lot of the books, but especially in Genesis, there are a lot of sidebar articles, which really digs into my sidebar space, which is the reason why I always interleave it, use whatever margins I have. And then I just take my notes here. But as you can see, I still have the whole back of this page that I can use um, to take notes. And then this I kind of try to leave most of it for when we do chapter two. But anyways, um, so when I was reading this, um, and we were just in the very beginning where we're talking about just verses one and two, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And I just kind of boxed that in and I put 
And it's something that I always know and I always say, God did not need to create the universe. He didn't need us. He chose to do that. He chose to create the universe. He chose to create create us. And the commentary I was reading is like, why? Why did God choose to do this if he didn't need us? Um, and it said, because God is love. And the other thing that really stood out to me says, love is best expressed towards something or someone else. Um, and so think about that for a second. Think about the things that you love, the people that you love. Now think about if you did not express your love towards those things or towards those people and you just reserve your love for loving yourself. And there's nothing wrong with loving yourself, but think about like if you only loved yourself, like you did not love anything else, you didn't love any of your favorite foods or your favorite music or your favorite book, you didn't love anything else or you didn't love anyone else. Think about how how that would make you feel don't try to necessarily compare it to how God would feel, but just think about that because that is something, like I said, that stood out to me that said love is best expressed towards something or someone else. And that explains why God created the universe, why God created us, because God is love and God wanted us. He wanted us. He wanted to show us his love. He wanted to just love on us. And that's the reason why he created us. And it's just, it's just one of those things. Every time I think about like God didn't need us. He he did not need us. He wanted us. And, you know, just think about, again, think about the the very minute, small things in your life that you don't need, but you just want, you know, you just want and think about, and just, just think about it for a little bit. Um, but going down a little bit more, um, this was something that stood out to me when it was talking about, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. Um, and he separated the light from the darkness. And, um, something that the commentary was saying is the first step from chaos to order is to bring light. So think about any time, like when you first walk in your house, when you are, you've come home from a long day of work, you've come home from whatever you're doing. The first thing, if it if it's still, you know, if it's dark outside, if it's not light in your house, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to hit a light switch and you're going to turn the light on. You have to think about why is that next to your front door? That's where light switches are next to every door, because the first thing you want to do when you come into your house is you want to turn the light on because that light brings a little bit of order because you can see where you're going. You're not bumping into things. You're not knocking things over. And so it said the first step from chaos is order. Excuse me. The first step from chaos to order is to bring light. And then it talks about in Second Corinthians chapter four, verses three through six, Paul writes about the light that is brought to us by the gospel. And so again, remember my Jesus Bible, um, there's always that pointing to Christ, but then also that's something that I love about the Enduring Word commentary, because that commentary does that a lot as well. Um, he is tying Old Testament and New Testament together, and he is always, um, or they rather, in the commentary, they're always pointing to Christ as well. So that was just something um, that stood out to me, because again, I'm always looking for cross-references to tie the Old and New Testament together or anything that would point to Jesus. And so now we get to the point where I started focusing on that repetition. And so I just chose a different color. And so the first one that I focused on is, and God said, dot, 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 and it was so. And so we have here, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters. And it was so. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together. And it was so, and so on and so forth. And so um, that was something that I noticed with that repetition. And again, like I said, I just chose purple. So I went through it and I, I circled it. Um, and the commentary was stating that God did not have to create or make things with his hands. Um, and so it's just something that is just so simple um, that gives us that distinction between man and between God. We have to use our hands or now we have technology, but we still have to use our hands to create and build and make things. And God doesn't have to do that like we do. It was enough for him to merely speak the words and it came into existence. And I remember something, I read it. I'm not sure where I read it and I'm not sure where I wrote it because it's obviously not in this Bible. So it's probably in a notebook somewhere. But um, there was something I was reading that was similar to this. Um, and it was basically saying, if... The mouth of God is so powerful that he can just speak things into existence. How much more powerful are the words that come out of his mouth? And it was in reference to reading your Bible and being in his word because it's like the the power of God's words is just, it's, it's immeasurable. And so that was just something that reminded me of it. And like I said, I don't remember where I read it. I don't remember where I wrote it. 
um like i said it either it's probably in my um my Amplify Bible, my Joyce Meyer Bible. I need to pull that out because I have a lot of notes in there as well and I need to start moving them in here. But it's just something that has just stuck with me though. So I don't even need the notes. I apologize if you heard the dominoes crashing. Um, but then the next thing that I started focusing on as far as the repetition is the according to its kind. And this was something that I hadn't even noticed like is there, but I didn't really notice the repetition of it until the commentary pointed it out. So I'm highlighting it in green. And this was referring to um, when God was creating um, the vegetation and the plants and the seeds and everything according to its kind um, and the trees bearing fruit according to its kind and um, creating the great sea creatures and every living creatures according to its kind and all of these things according to its kind. And the commentary was pointing out that this phrase appears 10 times just in Genesis chapter one, according to its kind. And I actually, after I went through and I highlighted it, um, I counted it. And that is something too that um, you guys may have noticed. It was, you know, with it being sped up, it was going a little fast. But before I started this, so I read this out loud to you guys in the intro. Plus I had already read this before. And then I read it again as I was highlighting it. And then I read it again as I was going through each section. And then when I was focusing on this repetition, I was reading the entire chapter each time so that I could make sure I didn't miss any of these. So I want to say it's probably at least 10 times I've read Genesis chapter one just doing this. And now, and that really helps to um, make the words stick in my mind. I'm not necessarily trying to memorize every single line in Genesis chapter one, but it's easier for me to recall it because I've read it so many times now, um, especially as I was looking for this repetition. But after I, hi um, not highlighted, but after I circled all of these, I actually went through and counted and it is indeed 10 times that according to its kind appears in Genesis 1. And the commentary was stating that it means that God does allow variation within a kind, but it says something of one kind will never develop into something of another kind. And so the examples that it was giving is like with dogs, there's a very big difference between a toy poodle and between a Great Dane, but they're both still dogs. But no matter how much genetic mutation or whatever you do, a dog will never be a mouse. It will never be anything but a dog. And so, um, and that came up quite a few times in the commentary about how God allows all these variations to um, all these different things, the variations in plants, the variations in seeds, the variations in trees, the variations in sea creatures and land creatures and flying animals and all of that, even the variations in humans. But something that is made of one kind will never develop or be something of another kind. Um, and so that was something that was just really cool to me. Like I said, that I just, I never really noticed, um, reading through it. So that was something that, um, another reason why I always recommend using commentaries, using different commentaries. Um, and then the, the other main repetition that I was focusing on, um, was, and God saw that it was good. And that was something that we, we all know. And so you see, um, when he, excuse me, separated the waters in the dry land and God saw that it was good. When he um, called for the earth to sprout vegetation and all the plants and all of these things and he saw that it was good and he saw that it was good, he saw that it was good. Um, and one thing that, man, this is just like, it stood out to me so much and it's just like, God is good and God knows what is good. And it's like, he's not some vague moral neutral. He knows what is good and he organizes his creation to result in something good. And something that stood out to me that, again, I didn't notice until the commentary pointed it out and I went back and read it and I realized it. It says, God does not call the earth good until it is habitable. It's a place where man can live. And that was really interesting to me and I didn't notice it. So I went back and again, I read it all over again. And you have in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And he saw the light was good. And he separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, he called the darkness night. There was evening, there was the first day. Uh, there's even there was morning excuse me the first day and then God said let there be an expanse so he separated the waters from the waters he separated the water from the dry land but it wasn't until the waters and the dry land were separated because at that point man can now live um because we won't drown in the water there's dry land for man to live on then God saw that it was good and then as the earth was sprouting vegetation and as there was 
um, the separation of the sky or the day from the night and all of these different things. But again, it was not something that I noticed because it's just, it's just something that wasn't until the commentary called it out. And I was, um, it's so funny. So I was driving today and I was listening to K-Love and I forgot the name of that Torn Well song that I was listening to. And Y'all, the more that I read and study my Bible, the more that the lyrics to worship songs make sense to me because I'm understanding what they're talking about. I'm seeing where they're, where, where they're pulling it from. I'm seeing the scriptures or the passage where they're pulling this information or pulling these verses um, or these lyrics for their song from. And in that song, Torn Wells was saying, if it's not good, then he's not done. He's not done with it yet. And like I have sung that song so many times and today it really hit me because I was kind of going over this in my head because I knew I was going to be coming home and fil filming this portion of the video. Um, but it just, it really, really hit me when he said that because when you, we were talking about yesterday um, in church, the sermon was about um, going through trials and how God is using these trials um, to to test you and to stretch you, but also to prepare you. And it just, like I said, the, the lyrics of that song really hit me because it's like, if you are going through something or you're in a situation right now and it's not good, know that God isn't finished yet because God knows what's good. There's a reason that you're going through whatever you're going through. And if it's not good, it's not done. He's not done with it yet. And it's just, like I said, it's just a new way for me to to look at situations that I'm in because it's like when I'm in a certain situation, when I'm going through something, um, I've gotten to the point now in my faith and my, my faith is rooted enough that I know that God is doing something with this. Like there's, there's a reason why God is allowing me to go through this and also guiding me through this instead of, um, me. So instead of me praying for, this thing to be over or for me to have never gone through it before. I just pray for God to allow me to see and allow me to learn what it is he wants me to learn as I'm going through this thing. But again, this is a whole nother way, not a whole nother way, but this is an additional way I can look at that situation and that trial is that if it's not good, that means God's not done yet because he's not going to just leave you stuck. And so like I said, it's just, just little things that I, like when I went into this reading, um, Genesis 1 and studying it like I knew some of the things that were going to come up in the commentary like there was like deep detail about every single verse and um like the the vegetation and the seeds and the order that everything was created all of that and I knew that that's not kind of what I wanted to focus on I wanted to focus on um more high level things so again because I have read Genesis 1 a few times before I knew there was all that repetition so that was something I wanted to focus on um and obviously the next thing I'm going to get to something I really wanted to focus on but I just, I did not expect to get this out of it. And it's, it's just really, really awesome. Um, and so the next thing, of course, is one of the big things that is always talked about um, in Genesis 1 is um, Genesis one twenty six. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And then going on and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and all of that. And so that was something that definitely stood out to me. And as you can see, there's even a sidebar article about being made in God's image. Um, so before I get into this, um, I already had these notes here. And so um, I think this was probably from another commentary when I originally had read this, but it really uh, stood out to me. And so I highlighted it. So in verse 27, it says, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. And so the commentary that I had read before, again, this was a note that I already had in here before I started this study, says the point of an image is to image. Um, and it says images are erected in public to display the original, point to the original and glorify the original. And so I went and I actually, again, using a dictionary, looked up the definition of image. Um, and so there's a lot of different definitions of image depending on the context that you're using. But in this particular context, it says image is a person or thing that closely resembles another. And it, another definition, it says semblance or likeness. And I remember, I didn't write it down, but I remember when I was reading this uh, commentary, it was talking about 
that we are God's image bearers. And it's actually um, over here as well a little bit. But we are the image bearers of God. And the reason why, and matter of fact, it was here. Let me jump over here real quick because this is talking about creation. And it said, God created the world for his glory. And see here, this is where I got it from. I was like, I knew it was like a commentary or something. So this is where I got it from. It says, um, what is the point of God creating man in his own image? The point of an image is to image. Images are erected in public to display the original, point to the original, glorify the original. God made humans in his image so that the world would be filled with reflectors of God. So that nobody would miss the point of creation. Nobody, unless spiritually blind, could miss the point of humanity, namely God. And so it's just, it's a, it's a lot of different things in here. Um, and it was just something that really stood out to me. And I said, God made humans in his image so that the earth, so that the world would be filled with reflectors of God. And something else I've talked about this on this channel before. Um, and I've talked about my own personal struggles with it as well. Um, just about self-worth and things like that. And I just put a note here as I was doing this study, I was saying, knowing that we are made in God's image and thus share many of his characteristics is a solid basis for positive self-worth. And I've talked about it. If anyone ever questions, is their life worth anything? Are they worth anything? Is their life worth living? Why were they created or anything like that? Like having that reminder and knowing that we were created by God specifically in his image to be his image bearers, that tells you everything you need to know right there. God chose us specifically to bear his image and that inherently gives your life and your self-worth. And so that was just something that stood out to me. Um, but then also in this sidebar article, um, I was highlighting a lot of things and I just decided to write it out here so I could see it. And so again, I just pro wrote, let us make man in our image after our own likeness. Um, and so this is why humans are an extra special creation because this was talking about when the rest of creation was being birthed, it was good. God created the birds, the fish, the plants, the stars to display his, his splendor and says, and oh, how amazing they are. God said these creations were good. However, when it came to humans, the tone changed. He said that the creation of humans was very good. It says human beings are an extra special creation for at least three reasons. Um, and so I decided to write those reasons out. And um, so the first one, it says, we have an identity that's rooted in God because we are created in his image. Um, and it said, when God said, let us make man in our image, he reiterated the presence of Jesus and the Holy Spirit in the act of creation. Humans are special because Jesus, as part of the Trinity, created them in his image. It says second, humans are special because they were created for a unique purpose. No two humans are the same. Other aspects of creation serve general functions, but only humans have a unique individual purpose. And then it said the third reason um, is that humans are designed to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God through Jesus, powered by the Holy Spirit. So there again, you see that Trinity. And it says, as a right of being created in the image of their creator, humans can relate directly to him. It is through Jesus that this relationship is made possible. It says he came and tore down the dividing wall of hostility that separated his special creation from God. And that came from Romans uh, chapter 8, verses 34 through 39. Um, because you have to remember, we haven't gotten to that yet, but you have to remember um, after the fall, after Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, um, prior to that, God was walking, literally walking in their midst, in their presence. After that, humans were separated from God. That was the purpose of the tabernacle and then eventually the temple because you had to, that was the purpose of all the sacrifices and the rituals because you had to do all of these things in order to be in the presence of God. And Jesus came and he removed that barrier for us. And so that was just something that obviously, like I said, is a, a big thing about uh, Genesis chapter one is the fact that we are made in God's image. Um, and so here, this is just um, more of the repetition from um, over here. And then something else that I noticed is so um, chapter one, verse 28, it says, and God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heaven and blah, blah, blah. And this is a note that I had from a while ago. I put Genesis 9, 1 post flood. So these are the exact same words that, so this is what God told Adam and Eve, to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. 
And then when he wipes out all of humanity, except for Noah's and his family, Noah and his family in the flood, he then turns around after the flood and tells Noah and his family the exact same words, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And um, so that was just, and just an old note that I just happened to have there that again, yet another reason why I love taking notes directly in my Bible is because when I come back through, I can see all these old notes that I had and I can just add on to them as opposed to them being tucked away inside a notebook. Um, and I may not be able to make those connections um, if I'm not doing it directly in my Bible. And then the other thing, um, the commentary, this was something that I've always like wondered about. It says, and God bless them. Or um, when you think about like Jacob wrestling with uh, God or with the angel of God, however you want to look at that. And um, God, uh, not God, God was basically saying, okay, let me go. And Jake was like, no, I'm not going to let you go until you give me my blessing. And even prior to that, um, just with all of the different people, it's like, what was the, what was up with these blessings? <laughs> like, I didn't, I didn't quite understand. And I still don't fully understand. But then when I saw this in the commentary, it says, and God bless them. It says, without the goodness of God's blessing, human life would not only be unbearable, but also impossible. So that's Still doesn't quite answer my question that I have, but it is something that I wanted to highlight because this was the first blessing that was given. Or is it was it the first blessing? I did God bless. I think God may have blessed the creatures. Yep, He did. So this wasn't the first blessing. God bless. Um, and this is a verse twenty and twenty one. Verse twenty one says, "So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves." with um that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind and god saw that it was good and god blessed them saying be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth and so on and so forth so god blessed the animals and then god blessed the humans as well and so again this still doesn't answer my question i have about blessings and i know that's something that i'm going to probably dig into a lot more um especially as we start getting further into genesis and you see these blessings being um, bestowed on different people or curses in place of blessings um it'll be something that i dig into a little bit more um but this is the other thing um i just wanted to read this to you all as well this is from genesis uh 128 um same thing with that blessing it says god bless them told them to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth and so it says God created mission it says Adam and Eve lived on mission. This is seen in a couple ways. First, they were to multiply and fill the earth as created image bearers were it not for sin. They would naturally multiply and fill the earth with more and more image bearing worshipers of God. As worshipers spread, the glory of God would be seen throughout the world God had created. Second, people were to exercise dominion over God's world. They were to do more than simply care for the world they were to harness the latent potential built into god's very go very good created design in order to magnify the order beauty and capabilities inherent in all things made by god sin changed all that god created but it did not obliterate this mandate in Christ, men and women can fulfill their God-given mission to fill the earth with worshipers and develop the world in such a way as to bring God great glory. And I just boxed it in and I put the Great Commission because um, that is what we are called to do. That is what God wanted them to do from the very beginning is to fill the earth with worshipers of God in order to glorify God. And that would have been, like I said, it would have been an easy task if they had not sinned because every every person that was born would have been a worshiper of god if it had not been for sin but again jesus came and he made it possible again for us to fulfill that mission that is my purpose that is as christians that is the number one purpose that we share is to fill the earth with worshipers and basically make disciples and again i just put the great commission there so this again was just very surface level of what is in Genesis chapter one. There's so much more that you can dig into. There's so much more that was in the commentary that I chose not to focus on again, because I felt like we would get very lost in it. Um, and it would be very overwhelming for one video. Um, but like I said, the beauty is I can always go back and pull in the enduring word commentary again and take more notes out of there. I can pull in other commentaries 
and I can just keep adding on to these notes. And that is my goal. And that that is what I want to do as I'm reading and studying God's word. Just continue at continually adding to my knowledge. If I see a sermon on Genesis one or a Bible study or something like that, I can always add more notes. I can tip in more pages. I can, you know, do what I've done further down and tip in flaps and all kinds of stuff um, with more notes. So I really love that. So if you guys have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer as much as I can. Please help each other out in the comments if you have an answer or a resource or can point someone in the right direction. Again, I want this to be a community. I want us to be able to have discussions, um, healthy discussions, um, debates if needed respectfully. Um, in the comment section below so yeah definitely let me know if you have any comments definitely let me know again i know that i only scratched the surface and there's so much more that i could have touched on in here so if there is anything in genesis 1 that you specifically would like to highlight something that you have learned in your reading in your study in your time with god that you want to put out there please put it in the comment section below to help me as well as to help everyone else so we can continue adding to our knowledge of god's word but again any other questions or comments um please leave them in the comment section below. Again, if you have not already, um, check out the link below that will direct you to my Ko-fi page so that you can get the free study guide for this. Um, again, it is free. The instructions are on the page. If you just want to receive it for free, just put zero in the box and go ahead and get it for free. If you feel led to leave a tip or a donation for it, you may definitely do that, but you are absolutely under no no way you are not obligated to do that again just put zero in the box so you can get it for free um so definitely go over to the Kofi page and get the study guide for that and just let me know let me know what you guys are thinking what you what you guys are learning what god is revealing to you as you are studying this and i look forward to having a lot of great conversations with you guys in the comment section and i will see you in the next one bye